Hey everybody, I love my Ford Ranger, but I hate how hard it is to check the transmission fluid level in it. The transmission dipstick is located on the side of the transmission. You have to crawl under the car and reach up right next to the scorching hot catalytic converter in order to check your fluid level. This is an oversight by Ford, if you ask me, possibly a cost-saving measure, I'm not sure which. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to install a transmission dipstick that was made by Mike's Build Shop. It's custom fit for this specific vehicle, and it's a very high quality product. Let's get started. Let's start by going over the items that come in the kit, as well as the tools and supplies we'll need to complete the install. The kit comes with this custom formed tube that is for the dipstick. This is custom formed for the Ford Ranger, though I believe Mike's Build Shop is working on a similar sort of setup for other vehicles that use the 10R80 transmission. There's an adapter that will uh, attach to the top of the transmission and adapt to the bottom of this tube. There's a small bracket here that's going to attach the top of the tube up in the engine bay. And then of course there's the dipstick itself. Now the dipstick is very well made and is etched with the exact instructions of how to check it and where the level should be, which will make checking your fluid levels and maintaining the correct level in your transmission very easy in the future. Turning our attention to the tools that we're going to need, we'll start with the 19 millimeter wrench. You'll need this to remove the existing dipstick cap from the top of the transmission. Now I'm using a box end ratcheting flex head wrench, which is maybe overkill for this job. If you just have a 19 millimeter socket on a ratchet, that should probably work or a regular 19 millimeter box end wrench. Though having something with a flex head will make this easier as the area you'll be working in is quite cramped. Next, I've got this little crescent wrench. I'm going to be using this to attach this adapter. This adapter is a 1 and 1 16th or about 27 millimeters. And I unfortunately don't own a socket that particular size. However, this wrench here is going to be large enough that I can get onto that fitting just fine. And it has a very short handle, which will make it really easy working in that very tight space. Next, we're going to need a 10 millimeter socket. This is on a quarter inch ratchet. So it's nice and small and compact, again, because we'll be working in a small space, but you'll need a 10 mil socket to attach this bracket up in the engine bay. In addition, we're gonna need some ways to uh, do a little bit of light cleaning around before we install this bracket. So I've got some brake cleaner and some rags out for doing that job. Got some gloves to keep my fingers clean, and of course the instructions that come with the kit. The first thing to do to start installing this product is to get the front of the truck lifted up a little bit. Now you can do this with a vehicle hoist, of course. If you don't have one of those, you can use just a jack and some jack stands like this to secure the front of the truck and make sure that it's safe to crawl under it. I'm not going to need to do that myself though because I have a lift kit installed on this truck which has brought the front of the truck up just about three inches and I've found in the past that that's given me just enough room to get under and get the access that I need. So I'll crawl under the passenger side of the truck and immediately you can see just on the inside of the frame rail there's a cross member and directly above that is a flex pipe from the exhaust. If you follow that flex pipe forward you'll come to the catalytic converter. Be very careful not to touch this when the engine is hot, it will burn you severely. Right next to the catalytic converter is the side of the transmission pan. And if you reach up in that crack right between the catalytic converter and the transmission pan, we'll find the fill plug on the transmission that we need to remove. Looking down from above, you can see this is how I snake the wrench in to get on top of that fill cap. Earlier I noted that having a flex head wrench is really helpful here and you can see why. It's a very tight area and something with a very long handle has a difficult time reaching down into this spot. In addition to bringing a wrench in from underneath like I am, there are two other ways you can try and crack this loose. The first would be to come in through the wheel well on the passenger side with a breaker bar, and the other would be to come down through the path you can currently see, which is down through the engine bay, though you'll need several long extensions on a socket to do that. No matter which route you take, cracking this cap loose is probably the most difficult part of the job. Once it's cracked loose, you should be able to reach your hand up between the catalytic converter and the transmission to use your finger and thumb to unscrew that cap. And then with the cap removed, you should be able to reach up again and pull out the factory dipstick from the transmission. It's really important to make sure the sealing surface is clean for the adapter for the dipstick tube. I'm just going to use a rag soaked in brake cleaner to reach up there and clean that surface off. If your truck's underbody is excessively dirty, has a lot of mud or sand or grit and dirt under there, you may want to blow all of that off with an air compressor or brush it off with a brush before you remove the cap. At any rate, just make sure the sealing surface is clean and that you don't knock any dirt or debris into your transmission. 
With the sealing surface nice and clean, we can install the adapter for the dipstick tube. It's important that you start this by hand. Make sure you don't use power tools here. And also the instructions note that you don't need to torque this down incredibly tight. Thread it in by hand until it seats and then snug it up with a wrench. Next we'll move up into the engine bay where on the rear passenger side of the engine you'll find this little bracket installed from the factory. That bracket is where we're going to install this little U-nut that comes with the dipstick kit. This U-nut is a fairly snug fit. Just reach back, slide it over, and make sure that the holes line up on the bracket from the factory. Now we're ready to thread the dipstick tube carefully along the back side of the engine right along the firewall. It should be on the outside of the transmission wire looms and behind the O2 sensor and the shape of the stick makes it so that it is only going to position itself correctly one way. I found it pretty easy to install by giving it a little bit of a clockwise twist as it just comes in contact with the O2 sensor. It's hard to show all that on film, but you'll be able to see by looking down along the back side there exactly what I'm talking about. And here's the position it should come to rest in with the MBS logo sitting right on top of that bracket. It really only fits one way, and when you do it correctly, you'll see that the bottom side of the tube comes and lands right on the fitting on the transmission. If you manage to thread it incorrectly, which I did on my first attempt, you'll see that it winds up sitting pretty far away from the fitting on the transmission. Here's a view from under the truck. You can see the transmission wire loom on the lower part of the screen there, and the tube is on the wrong side of that loom, which is why it's not fitting where it's supposed to. This was my first attempt, and I had to back it out and try one more time. Once you have the tube routed correctly, go back down under the truck and get the thread started by hand. The instructions say it's a good idea to go ahead and bottom it out and then back it off a couple of turns to give a little bit of play in the tube. We'll come back in just a moment to tighten it down, but first we have to go back up to the top of the engine bay and use a supplied bolt to attach the bracket through the U-nut that you previously installed. Again, it's a good idea to start this one by hand and then finish it off with a wrench or a ratchet. We're almost finished. There's just one more thing to take care of up here before we go down and tighten up that final fitting. You may recall on the hose there is a little wider section here and this section comes to rest on the back side of the engine against this little bracket. Before you go down and tighten everything up at the bottom, reach down there with your fingers and push that area over towards the driver's side so it just gets to the driver's side of that protrusion on that bracket. With that repositioned you can then go back down under the truck Tighten that fitting the rest of the way by hand, and then use a wrench to snug it up. The fittings that are included with this kit do not require an excessive amount of torque. Just snug them up firmly with a wrench and you're done. This concludes the install of the dipstick tube. The final thing to do, of course, is to insert the dipstick itself, making sure it's seated all the way. Now that our installation is complete, there are two things we need to check. The first is the distance from this pipe right here from the air conditioner and the back side of the transmission dipstick tube, this gap right here. We want to ensure that this gap is at least three quarters to an inch or so wide because as the engine's running it's going to rock back and forth in the engine bay and you don't want this dipstick tube to be banging into your air conditioning piping like that. So to adjust this it's really simple. All you do is reach over and just nudge the air conditioning pipe. Don't give it too much force, but you should be able to move it relatively easily and widen that gap. This is now closer to about three quarters or maybe even a little bit more, so I'm happy with where that is now. The second thing we need to adjust is this wiring loom right here. As you can see, it's basically touching the bottom of my transmission dipstick tube bracket here, and with engine vibration over time, there is a danger that that could rub through and cause a short in that loom. Fixing this is extremely easy. The bracket that that loom is attached to is right here that I'm touching with my finger. And the way to adjust this is just to grab a crescent wrench like this, put it right over the end of that, and then very gently, this doesn't take very much, just lift up on the crescent wrench which bends that bracket down and opens about a quarter inch or so gap. That's all you need. You just need to make sure that it's not actually touching the bracket as long as you've got clearance like that you should be good and there's no danger of that rubbing through and ruining the loom. Now that the transmission dipstick's installed, let's go ahead and check our fluid level. Now, those of you who are playing along at home might realize I'm doing this incorrectly. And if you don't know the correct way, the instructions are printed right on the dipstick. You can see here clearly it says maintain fluid level between four and five, 
check hot in park. Well, my engine's not currently hot. I did this install cold on purpose because I didn't want to burn myself. It is in park, but the engine's not currently running. So the fluid level is going to be way too high. And as you can see on our dipstick, it's up here near the two right now. It's a little hard to see on the camera, but I can tell that that's where it is. It's up, up right at the top of those hash marks. And that's because the pump inside the transmission is not currently running and pumping that fluid up into the transmission body. When you go drive the truck, it's going to pump that up and the fluid level is actually going to drop down in the transmission. And you want it to be right between the 4 and the 5 on this stick. So, in order for me to check this correctly, i got to go for a little drive and then come back, put it in park on a level surface, and then we'll check it with the engine running and in park and we'll check and see what the fluid level is then. All right, I'm back from a drive. I made sure to go at least 10 miles, get the truck nice and warm, get that transmission oil as hot as it's supposed to be. And now I'm back in the garage on nice level ground and the truck is back in park. We're ready to check our fluid level. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is pull out the stick and we're just gonna wipe it off because we don't care what that fluid level was, we care what it is. And so, just like when you check your engine oil, pull it out, wipe it off, and then we're gonna put the dipstick back in Make sure it seats all the way, you'll feel it click, and then pull it back out and read that level. And it's supposed to be between four and five, and I don't know how well you can see that on the camera, but it is exactly perfect. It's right near the top of the four mark. You might be able to see it better on the back side. You need to read it fairly quickly because transmission fluid is pretty thin when it's hot. We'll do one more. You might have to check several times before you can get a good reading. But we are right at the four. It's really hard to see on camera. I don't know if we're even gonna be able to pick that out, but it is right in line with the four. It actually goes sort of diagonally down right across the four there. So I'm happy with that level. We're right where it's supposed to be. We can put our dipstick back in. Now the other thing I'm really happy about having this is that if the fluid level was too high, I could siphon some out through that tube. And if it's too low, of course, I can fill it through that tube as well. Those are both improvements that are really difficult to do with the original Ford system. All right, as you can see, installing this is not that hard. There's a few tricky spots, but the instructions are excellent. The full color illustrations really helped. And I'm extremely happy with the quality and the fit and the finish of this particular product. Now, full disclosure, I paid full price for this and I would do it again. I did not ask for any special favors at all from Mike's Build Shop. I know, however, that he's a small one-man manufacturer, at least at this point. He makes all of these by hand, if you can believe that, and they are excellent. If you have a 2019 or newer Ford Ranger and you're looking for a transmission dipstick, look no further. Don't even mess with any of the others that are out there. Get one from Mike's Build Shop. You will not be disappointed. I hear he has plans to expand to some of the other Ford vehicles with the same transmission. So if you've got one of those, maybe reach out to him and see if he's got yours available now. I will see if I could leave a link down in the description below for him. If you've enjoyed this video, you can let me know about that with a thumbs up down below. If you've got any questions or comments about how I did this, maybe suggestions for how I could improve, you can let me know about that down in the comments section. And if you wanna see more content like this, other do-it-yourself videos and projects, you can uh, feel free to subscribe, but it's never any pressure from me, of course. And as always, thank you so much for watching. For your 1080R, 1080R, that's what it's called. Installed even if you're a complete newbie. <sighs> newbie, too bad. The instructions are excellent. The moths are flying all over the place. I get it? I got it for other 1080R equipped vehicles. 1080R, yeah, that's the transmission. Back from a longer drive, I did about kill that moth, kill that moth, kill that moth, die! <sighs> Got him.